Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video where we are talking in a general manner about free radical reactions. The best way to understand this set of reactions is by using organic compounds because they are of environmental or biological importance. Therefore, it makes sense to use these type of compounds. What is a free radical reaction? It's anything which involves radicals and the propagation of radical reactions. You always want to think about how a free radical reaction starts and that's your initiation step. There are three steps to be worried about. The first step is called your initiation step where you generate your very first radical. And I'm just using chlorine, diatomic chlorine as an example. It is hit by a certain UV radiation and you end up generating two chloride radicals. Whenever you're seeing a compound which is made up of two atoms A and B and you're seeing a single bond, you're thinking about everything like this. There are two electrons which represent that. If you are to pull one electron here and pull one electron here, you have basically generated two separate elements, but each of those elements has one electron and it's an unpaired, unshared electron, therefore it represents a radical. You have to remember this is always going on in the background. This is represented by two electrons and pulling an electron by each of the compounds you're generating what are called free radicals. Keep that in mind as you see everything now in the remainder of this video. Your initiation step is that step which generated your first bunch or your first radical and here I've generated two chloride radicals, chlorine radicals, because you were looking at something like chlorine, chlorine, it pulled one electron to each and you generated two chloride radicals. The next step, which will be the propagation step, is where the chlorine radicals will affect other compounds and start continuing and creating new bunch of reactions. That will be your propagation. You know propagate means to continue something. You initiate, then you propagate. Well, propagate, well, we can just keep everything in the same tense. Initiation and propagation. What will be our main compound we're looking here? How about ethane, E-T-H-A-N-E, C2H6. You have a single chlorine radical and it finds a compound which is called ethane and it looks like this, C2H6. This chlorine radical is now trying to find another electron to complete its unpaired electron and complete the picture. That is to make itself more stable. It will come over here from this bond and it'll attack it. You know, it's gonna pull one over here and this bond is gonna go over there. You'll end up seeing the generation of a compound which will be HCl, hydrogen chloride, because it's plucked that hydrogen away. And now you've generated a radical here in terms of your ethane compound. It will be your ethyl radical and it will look something like this. Everything else will stay undisturbed except for this single hydrogen which has been lost from right over here. You've generated an ethyl radical. Whenever you're looking at free radical reactions, it's very difficult to control your reaction because you can get mixture of different products. You cannot guarantee when you're looking at free radical reactions that you'll always have a controlled reaction and you'll always have one single type of compound being formed. You can have multiple different compounds being formed. Look, when we started this free radical reaction, we've generated a chlorine radical, that's one species, but we've also generated a hydrogen chloride and we've also generated an ethyl radical. This chlorine radical can go on to do more damage, but this ethyl radical can also do some damage too. You have ethyl radical, which I'll draw over here, and look what it can do. It has an unpaired electron right here, and now it wants to look for something and complete that and make it a paired electron. It can actually go back and attack the HCl and then regenerate itself. It can attack this and you pull that electron away and you'll regenerate your ethane and then you'll regenerate your chloride radical. You can do that. And the ethyl radical can also find another counterpart like an ethane compound. And look what it can do over here. It can find a full ethane compound. It can attack this hydrogen. You're plucking that away, you're plucking that away. And you're generating an ethane, C2H6, but then you've generated another radical, an ethyl radical. It's C2H5 because one hydrogen has been lost. But you see how you've regenerated ethane, you've generated another ethyl radical. But this ethyl radical can find another ethyl radical. That's why I'm saying you'll always get different mixtures of compounds. It's very difficult to control your reaction. It can find what would be another ethyl radical. Somehow in the reaction you have multiple ethyl radicals which are finding each other and now they can react with each other. This can pair up with that and you can generate a single compound and that would be C4H10. 
you will generate butane C4H10 that's another compound which has generated but the main point here is the propagation step is very difficult to control because you'll always have mixtures of compounds we have hydrogen chloride we have ethyl radical we have ethane being formed we can see chloride radical reform we can have butane forming all of these once a butane is formed you have C4H10 what can happen is that a ethyl radical can find it C2H5 it can find it and then it can pull out one of these hydrogens by means of an electron remember hydrogen is one it's equal to just one electron and you know 1s1 is the electron configuration it can pull the hydrogen and you've generated C2H6 at ethane but then now you've generated a C4H9 a butyl radical you see how the reaction is so uncontrolled you have too much going on this butyl radical now can probably find another somewhere in the mixture another butyl radical C4H9 butyl radical and they can combine and you can form C8H18 and octane the octane can somehow get converted into a radical and then it can combine with another octyl radical and you can start generating multiple large compounds or these can find other smaller counterparts and start generating a mixture you could have C4H9 combined with the C2H5 and you can start generating a hexane you see how all the different combinations meet and how the different combinations generate from just a single radical you have just an uncontrolled set of reactions now I'm going to erase all of that because it's just generalized material that I want to present because now we will show you how you can see the final step. The final step is called the termination step which is very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do a termination because in a very controlled environment you can do a termination where all the radicals like this meet other compounds and they close out meaning they lose the radical properties. You can have C2H5 combining with another C2H5 and you can have these are two radicals hitting each other and then you're having C4H10 you can have C2H5 then meet with perhaps somewhere along the way a Cl radical and then you can have ethyl chloride you can have chlorine start affecting and corrupting these compounds by forming a bond with these hydrocarbons and you can start getting chlorohydrocarbons anyhow termination reaction is where all of these radicals get consumed and you start generating non-radicals in the atmosphere and the environment is very difficult to do termination because these reactions can go on forever hence you have the problem with the chlorofluorocarbons these are pollutants because they start generating free radicals which go on and on forever and they start destroying your ozone layer that's exactly how it works but anyhow remember there's initiation step which is generation of your free radical is propagation step where you have a mixture of compounds being generated as those free radicals undergo reactions in the termination step the free radicals get consumed and they start generating non-radical compounds but this right here can only occur in a very controlled environment in an uncontrolled environment termination step may never occur and the propagation step will continue on and on forever and that's it for this video thank you for watching